everyone, I am Crystal and we are the group one. We are going to discuss the book The Leo Prince by Antoine de Saint Echeperi. I was assigned as the artist for this activity. Hope you'll enjoy our presentation. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Jocelyn and I'm going to discuss to you the author of The Little Prince and after that I will give you the questions that help you to identify and have an idea about the book. So the author of the story is Anton Marie Jean Baptiste Roger, Comte to the Saint Exupery. He was also known as the Saint Exupery. He was born on 29 of June 1900 and then dead on July 31, 1944. He was a French writer, poet, aristocrat, journalist, and a vehicle. He became a laureate of several of Prime's highest literary awards and also won the United States Book Award. He is best remembered for his novella, The Little Things, and for his lyrical aviation writings, including Wind, Sun and Stars, and Night Life. So now I will give you the questions. The number one question is What do you think the little prince represents in the story? And number two, do you think we can use these characteristics of the prince? And number three, who is the narrator of the story? And number four, do you think the narrator is a protagonist or antagonist? And number five, what is the lesson of the story? Good day everyone, I am Angel Joy Elvira. And I am Crystalline Santos. For today, we are going to discuss to you the conflict and the symbols of the story, The Little Prince. The Baobabs The Baobabs in the story represent the grave danger that can fall upon people who are too lazy or indifferent to keep a wary eye on the world around them. The Trains The trains that appeared in Chapter 12 represent the futile efforts we make to improve our lives. The train rides are rushed to voyages that never result in happiness because as the switchmans inform the prince, people are never happy where they are. Water By the end of the story, the drinking of water emerges as a clear symbol of spiritual fulfillment. The narrator's concerns about running out of water after he first crashes into the desert mirror his complaint that he has grown older. Later. When he and the prince find the mysterious well, the water the narrator drinks reminds him of Christmas festivities. His thoughts of Christmas ceremonies suggest that his spirit, and not his body, is what truly thirsts. The stars there symbolize the distant mystery of heavens and the vastness of the universe, and at the end of the story, the loneliness of the narrator's life. Furthermore, it is also the reminder of the huge and densely populated universe beyond the earth wherein the little prince recounted visiting. The desert is an antagonistic space having no basic necessities in order to survive. The desert symbolizes the narrator's mind. Made barren by grown-up ideas, the narrator's mind slowly expands under the guidance of the little prince in the same way that the deadly desert slowly transfigures itself into a learning place and once the well appears refreshment let's now proceed to the conflict of the story the pilot is a grown-up but one who has always been an explorer and sympathetic to the values and perspectives of the children another major conflict is that the childlike perspective of the prince and to some extent those of the narrator are in conflict with the stifling beliefs of the adult world or the perspective of grown-up people. I am Emma Riboloso, and I will share to all of you the summary that describes how the setting, plot, and characters are developed in the book of The Little Prince. The Little Prince story begins when the narrator depicts his childhood when he drew many creative pictures and showed them to adults but was disheartened by their crude comments. He says he then gave up his potential career of an artist and putting his creativity to use and instead became a pilot because it was what the adult believed was sensible. One day, his plane crashes and lands in the middle of the Sahara Desert. There, he meets the little prince 
who instructs him to draw a ship. Learning pieces about the strange prince through their conversations, the narrator pilot finds his little friend has come from an asteroid B612. The little prince took great care of its asteroid, preventing bow bulbs, destructive plants, and other unwanted things from destroying his home. One day, a rose appears on his asteroid, and as he cares for it most deeply, thinking she is the most wonderful, special creature ever, he is depressed to assume that she does not love him back. The little prince then leads his asteroid in rose. As he lands on many asteroids, each one is occupied by a different adult. First, he meets the king, a man attempting to rule over the universe and the stars. The monarch, however, does not realize the will of his presumed subjects, who do not even know they are being ruled over because of natural instincts. He covers up his lack of understanding for these things by saying, Accepted authority rests first of all on reason. If you order your people to go and throw themselves into the sea, they will rise up in revolution. I have the right to require obedience because my orders are reasonable. As he continues his journey, he meets more and more seemingly pathetic people, a conceited man who believes the little prince is only an admirer, a tippler who is attempting to drink his problems away, a businessman too busy to stop his work for anything, a lamplighter who does nothing but light his lamp day and night, and a geographer who cannot complete his work because there is no explorer. Next, the little prince goes to earth, where he meets a snake who is very much pleased in the prince's company because of his innocence and honesty in all matters, and says his bite can send them back to their homes where they truly belong. He then finds a flower, an echo, of which he believes is mocking him. Many roses which depress him because the rose on his planet had told him she was the only one of her kind in the universe and the fox whom he befriends and attempt to tame. He also meets some humans who seem highly peculiar to him, a railway switchman who is unsatisfied, and most people are unsatisfied, except for children who are the only ones that know what they are looking for, and the merchant who sells pills that will quench thirst and save bulb of time. This is the end of the little princess told story, the part where he ends up in the desert with the narrator pilot. They finally find a well to quench their tears and share an understanding moment when they both know that people no longer see what is important in life but lead mechanical, empty lives. However, the little prince misses his homeland dreadfully and finds the snake to bite him and send him back to his asteroid. Before he leaves, he gives the narrator a gift of laughing stars, something no one else in the universe has. The narrator, with his newfound friend and outlook on life, then proceeds to examine the lovely and sad landscape of the desert and the lone star of the little prince shining in the night sky. I'm Janice. I'm going to discuss how the character interact on major events that occur and shifts in the setting or the mood in the story. The story of the little prince is a start after he believes he has been spawned by his roots. The prince travels to neighboring planets and eventually lands on Earth. He wanders through the desert in search of humans, and he is eventually found by the fox. The fox teaches the little prince his secret, and the little prince realizes the value of his roots. The prince meets the narrator to whom he passes along the fox's instruction. When the snake greets the prince, he alludes to his ability to send back the prince to the heavens, which he does at the end of the novel. The danger of narrow-mindedness, enlightenment, true exploration, relationship, teach responsibility to